Someone calls me a fat rubbish hanging apron. <laughs> and I'm just like, how fat do you have to be to be a fat version of a fat person? Do you know what I mean? Like he's fat. I, how can I be a fat version of Robin? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so insulting to both of us. The most annoying thing someone can say after a gig. Oh my God, where do I start? Um, I didn't expect it to be funny. The other one I heard was keep going. Yeah. He's actually uh, but so quiet. At a gig where people paid like 20 quid a ticket, someone said, you should do this professionally. Where do you think, where do they think where the money where, was going? What, what does that mean? So they went, they went to a gig, and they went, here's 20 pounds. Here's 20 pounds. And you want to I'm paying to watch some comedy. <laughs> I'm paying to watch I perform, a live comedian today. Yes. They enjoyed my performance and thought it prudent to say, you should think about doing this professionally. <laughs> okay. Imagine if someone did that to Messi. <laughs> He's like dribbling around the whole park, everywhere. Like, Yo, you should do this again. You should do this, you should do this again like, uh, professionally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ridiculous. Yes, I liken myself to Messi and what? Anyway. The, the, the comedy's messy. The comedy's messy. Person you find the funniest? Uh, the person I find the funniest is my brother. My brother is 10 years younger than me. And uh, even though we're 10 years apart, we're very, very close. But I think part of it is because there's a whole decade between us, his sense of humour is very reflective of like this modern younger generation Instagram and all this stuff. But we somehow bridge that gap and just, he makes me laugh like nobody's ever made me laugh. We'll find stupid things funny. Like last week we went to McDonald's, we were both quite drunk, and we decided we'd order a carrot bag instead of chips. <laughs> and this carrot bag thing has completely taken over our lives, right? Because it was taking ages for the orders to come through. We ordered. A burger with a carrot bag and banana milkshake, because we thought this would be funny. It is funny. Right? So far, I'm very on board. It was taking ages for it to come, and then me and my brother got it into our heads that they had to grow the carrots. Like, who's ever ordered a carrot bag at McDonald's? It's no true. one. Yeah. And like, head office has got a notification. Yes. In that HQ, a big <laughs> yeah. red light. <laughs> carrot. Someone's pulling a fucking carrot bag. What psychopath is <laughs> doing this? So then it took ages, and about 15 minutes later, the woman goes, uh, "Order number 24." So we're like, if she says we're out of carrots, it'll be the funniest thing. Instead she just went, we don't have any milkshake. And we're like, how is the milkshake the problem? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You've got the carrots. Oh, and there's a football team called Karabag from okay. Azerbaijan. Fair. They play in the Europa League. Did you know that before you yeah, ordered yeah. the carrots bag? Yeah. So then we were like, we're now fans of Karabag. Karabag lost to Sevilla 3-0 last week. And then I said to my brother, if there's one team we'd expect to have good vision, it would be Karabag. So we emailed Carabag to say, can we come and give you some carrot bags? Yeah. It's just completely taking out my life. But that's the kind of stupid shit I do with my brother that I can't do with anyone. That's great. Do you talk about your relationship with your brother on stage much? No. Is that a reason or just? No, it just hasn't come up yet because yeah. I think the funny that me and my brother have is just so unique to us. Mm. And it's going to be a bit difficult to like translate that on stage. Yeah, I can really get it. Next one. An insecurity. Oh, so, so. And um, I, think, I think the biggest insecurity is probably like, have I done enough to repay my parents? I think a lot of immigrant children especially have this tendency where you know, our parents work so hard to raise us in a comparative better privilege. And sometimes you think to yourself, I'm telling jokes for a living. I don't know if that's enough to repay how hard my dad worked. What was their reaction to you doing comedy? They're very supportive. I think part of the thing is, is you know, our parents, no matter where they come from, they want the best for their kids, ultimately, in most cases. Um, and if they feel like they've empowered me enough to be able to follow my dreams in a way they weren't able to, then they did their job properly. So then I kind of go a bit like, well, you know, my dad did every Friday for seven years, did a double shift, and this is the result. Yeah. So, but I think, I don't, I don't know what will square that off for me. I don't know where, at which point I'll be like, you know what? I think I'm doing enough. Yeah. That was the last of my question. Some happy news I heard through the grapevine. You're going to be doing Mock the Week in October. I am doing Mock the Week in October. I mean it. Uh, but it's just nice, you know, you, we were talking about trying to repay your parents. Sometimes parents want you to do stuff that they recognise. That's what I was My dad before. is like, oh, I've heard of Mock the Week. Well, that's great, you know. Maybe there is something to you driving to fucking Dartford for 50 quid. Yeah. Just want it all 
Yeah. It's that, that, that one television appearance for 20 minutes on yeah. the telly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't, they don't pay you very much. Oh, yes. But is it, you, do you know who the other guest is? There's two guests, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know and I don't care because I want to be the funniest. Yeah, that's true. Have you started writing some jokes? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Yeah. How I would, they go? Are you testing them out? Are you... Yeah, I mean, I don't need to test them because I'm very funny. I. But. <laughs> I've got a lot of sass today, I'm very confident. You did, I love it. It might make I'm me- I'm kind of into it over here. It's kind of overwhelming me a bit, <laughs> yeah, I think. I like it, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ishan, this is, <laughs> this is quick fire. Okay. First thing that comes to your mind, we're gonna go fast, ready? Funniest vegetable. Aubergine. Free food or free clothes? Free food. Weapon of choice? AK-47. Favorite comedian? Right now. Uh, favorite comedian, uh, Dave Chappelle. Coffee or alcohol? Coffee. What's nicer, laughing at someone or making someone laugh? Making someone laugh. Favourite comedy venue? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Gl Glasgow Stands. Mm, nice. You can have anything on your rider for a gig. What do you go for? Peanut M&Ms. Mm. Piss hand sanitizer or shit bacterial wipes? Shit bacterial wipes. We have a child. <laughs> Name it. Ishan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <how's that> <laughs> yeah, no, what else could it be? Okay, last one. Your arch nemesis. Rubbish Rangan Aiken. Oh! <laughs> I love the guy, I do. He's absolutely amazing, one of the nicest guys on the planet. But this yeah. and Ramesh at the same uh, yeah. you don't see us at the same place. Indeed. Someone called me a fat Ramesh Rangan Aiken. <laughs> and I'm just like, how fat do you have to be to be a fat version of a fat person? Do you know what I mean? Like, he's fat. I, how can I be a fat version of Ramesh? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so insulting. <laughs> To both of us. I think you're beautiful. That's all we got today. Thank you, Ishan. Do you have anything to promote? Yeah, I've got a couple of shows coming up at the Top Secret Comedy Club. Uh, Infidelity, my Edinburgh show I'm doing in London, 12th and 24th of November. Follow me on social media. My name is Ishan Akbar. But a lot of people struggle to spell it. So? On Twitter, I'm called Michael, Michael Packentire. Ah. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs>